Hey guys, we are today looking at lesson two, one, estimate sums and differences of decimals. So our I can statement today is as I can estimate sums and differences of decimals. And here's our standard that we're going to be working on today. Let's go ahead and start by looking at this problem that they give us. It says an amusement park has two roller coasters. One is 628 feet long and the other is 485 feet long. If you ride both roller coasters, about how many feet will you travel in all? So what we're going to do before we do any work, we are going to circle the important information. So in this case, we have one of them is 628 feet long, and then the other is 485 feet. If you're riding both of the roller coasters, about how many feet will you travel in all? So when we see about how many, that's going to be an estimate. Now, sometimes we will see about how many, and they've already estimated it for us. So just be careful when you see about how many, because sometimes you don't have to estimate. Sometimes it's already an approximate amount, and you're just having to add it. But in this case, they're asking us to estimate because neither one of these are an approximate amount. Those are the exact amounts. So when we see the words in all, we're looking for the length of both of the roller coasters so we know that we are going to add at some point. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, I'm going to have 628 and I'm also going to have 485. So because I am adding that up, I am going to estimate because we're looking for an approximate amount, I'm actually going to add up all of it, but I'm going to estimate about how much this would be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to round this number to the nearest hundred. So if I'm rounding this number to the nearest hundred, it would be about 600. We can all agree that that's going to be probably about 600. Then we look at our second one and we see that 485, well, if I put it on a number line, it's going to be about... 500 and if we think back to when we were estimating um, or rounding decimals we would go up so this 8 would tell the 4 to just go up to that next place which would be 500 so then I could add these up I know that 6 plus 5 is 11 so that would be about 1100 or 1100 and remember that's an approximate amount that's not the exact amount and so that would be about how much it would be. Any questions so far? Just pause it and rewatch it if you don't understand. If not, we are going to move on. Hopefully this seems very similar to something that you've done in the past. Now, how can you estimate and sums? Sorry, how can you estimate sums and differences? So on the back of this page, we've turned to page 48. It says students are collecting dog food to give to an animal shelter. I love this. This is my favorite kind of word problem when we're giving back to our community. You know, new, especially with our animals. Estimate how many pounds were collected in weeks three and four. So we're estimating. We know we're going to estimate. And it wants us to estimate for weeks three and four. So when I do these types of problems, I'm going to go and look for weeks three and four because they're giving us five weeks worth of data. We don't need five weeks worth of data. We just need week three and four. So I'm going to circle weeks three and four. All right, there's my information. And this person right here is saying that there's going to be more than one way to find an estimate. We know, based on what we've learned in the past with math, that there's not always one specific way to find the answer. There's a more accurate way to find the answer, um, but sometimes we use different strategies that will help us get the same answer. So in this case, they're wanting us to round each add into the nearest hundred, and that's what I would do. I would round 237, because that was week three, 237 to the nearest hundred, which would be two hundred and then we have three hundred and forty five and one tenth then we would round that to three hundred which if we added that up it would be five hundred so it would be about five hundred pounds collected for weeks three and four 
And that's probably the way that most people are going to do it. The other way that you can do it is through compatible numbers. And with that, you would estimate this to be close to 250, and then this would be close to 350. So it would be a little bit more. You see it's about 100 more, um, but it's about 600 pounds of dog food. So both of those would work. Um, compatible numbers just help to add and make it easy. Honestly, I kind of lean more towards this way because it's a little bit easier and it's not necessarily more exact because this is a more exact answer rather than this one but I lean towards this because there's only one thing that I'm having to go closer to so that's a personal preference whatever you feel more comfortable with you are welcome to do so we're going to go ahead and go to another example on this page. It says you can estimate differences. So we're doing the same thing we did on this page, except now we're doing it with differences, which means we're working with subtraction. I know y'all are like, I don't like it, but you know, we still have to do it. So we're going to estimate. So we have two, 22 and 84 hundredths minus 13 and 97 hundredths. Now one way to do this, because remember we're estimating to find these differences. Here's our key one with this one, estimating. We're gonna round each number to the nearest whole number. So with that, we would have 22 and 84 hundredths. We're gonna round that to the nearest whole number, which would be 23, because the eight is gonna tell the two to go up to a three, and then the other two stays the same. So it ends up being 23. And then this one, we would round to the nearest whole number, the nine tells the three to go up, which turns to a 14. And then we would just subtract like normal, so it's gonna be about nine. Another way we could do this is to use uh, compatible numbers, so we would round this up to about 25. Um, and it's a little bit further off, but you, we know how to subtract with five, so it ends up when you subtract it's a little bit easier. This one would round up to 15, and then when we subtract it, it's gonna be about 10. So like I said, either way you wanna do it works, um, but I kinda lean more towards this way because I feel like this is the way we've taught, or we've done it in the past more than with compatible numbers. All right, so let's look at number one. It says, is nine or 10 closer to the actual dis difference of 22 and 84 hundredths minus 13 and 97 hundredths? How can you tell without subtracting? So if we do this, let's look at, if we rounded this, this would be, if we round it to the nearest whole number, that's gonna be our 23. If we rounded this to the nearest whole number, this would be about 14. So if we subtracted that, it's probably gonna be about nine. All right, and then if we did it with the compatible numbers, we would have um, 25 minus 15, which would give you 10. So which one is gonna be closer to that difference? Well, we didn't have to go quite so far when we did it this way. So nine would probably be closer um, than if we would have used compatible numbers. Okay, so let's look and we're gonna actually find some sums and differences with estimation. So this one you're gonna to estimate to find either the sum or the difference, whichever one you are doing. So let's look at this one. We have 49 plus 22 and 88 hundredths. So what I probably would do, again, I'm gonna have my 49 and you might want a scrap piece of paper because look at the little bit of room that they give. They're not giving us a whole lot of room, so have either a scrap paper or something close by so that you can work these out. So you have 49, and then we're adding, well, eight tells the two to do what? It tells it to go up, so that would be a 23. So nine plus three is gonna give me 11. Nope, sorry, nine plus nine, it's gonna give you 12, not 11. We regroup. 4 plus 1 is 5, plus 2 is a 7, so that would be about 72. There, hopefully there's no questions. If not, I need you to get with me so that I can help you to this point. And let's do a subtraction one together, and then I'm going to give you some practices on your own. So let's go down to number 7. 
Okay, number seven says 23 and 8 tenths. If I rounded that to the nearest whole number, so that, remember, when we round to the nearest whole number, we're rounding to the ones place. So the eight tells the three to go up, so we have 24 minus, well, the seven tells the four to go up, so that goes to a five. So 24 minus five is gonna give me 19. Okay. Again, I highly suggest you taking a scrap piece of paper and writing this down as you go. So what I want you to do is I want you to circle 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 13, sorry, let me move that out, excuse me, um, 16, and 17. So let's flip to the back. We are gonna do a couple on the back. You know, I need we need those uh, word problem practices. We are going to do 22 and 23. All right, hopefully y'all are good. If you have any questions, please, please, please ask. If not, keep on going. You got this, guys.